if anyone thought this this series was going to finally find its footing at the very end, um, I'm very sorry to disappoint you <laughs> because I think this, at least for right now, because we have another episode, uh, is by far the worst episode of the entire series, which again is saying something because so much of this show up to this point, for the most part, has been disappointing to downright terrible. So chat, so my friends, let's go ahead and move on to my review for Star Wars The Acolyte Episode 7. Um, so The Acolyte has been, I think overall, a very disappointing series uh, for a variety of, of, of reasons. While I've, you know, I've certainly praised it for some of its, its action, choreography, like in you know, Episode 5, we were finally getting a, a, a fairly nice duel between, you know, a bunch of Jedi and, and a Sith Lord. And, you know, just the Sith himself, you know, Manny Jacinto, I think, has done a, a, a pretty good job throughout the show. And has even elevated some of the wonky dialogue and, and, and material on, on several occasions just thanks to his charismatic performance. Everything else about this show, across the board, has been wildly inconsistent to downright terrible, <laughs> laughably terrible in many instances. From the abysmal writing, direction, uh, acting, and, and at times production values, we, we've gotten a sci-fi fantasy show that is barely able to stay coherent within a, a single episode. Hell, within a single fucking moment. You know, honestly, the, the best episode of the series which many would argue is the fifth episode, is probably as good as it is because so few of the characters actually are talking. So few of these characters are having discussions with one another. And most of the cast is killed off by that point. You know, I, I don't really think that's a great thing at all in, in, in hindsight. You know, th this was a show that was promised to be an exploration of the dark side and the Sith. They were, this show was supposed to present them as, as the main characters of, of the series. But from the first few episodes alone, you know, that, that clearly just hasn't been the case at all. Instead, we've been presented with this new story, a murder mystery, kind of, uh, you know, of sorts, where we follow just painfully underwritten characters along with just being a failed deconstructive take on, on the Jedi, you know, continuing the, the damage that the prequels did, making them less, just lesser overall, and thoroughly boring uh in 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 the process you know and, and here we are with with the with the seventh and and the i can't believe it's the penultimate episode of of the of the series they say season but that i would be shocked shocked if it's if this gets a second season especially because i guess the ratings have for this uh, over the last several weeks have been absolutely abysmal um but you know, we at, we're at the penultimate episode, and it, it presents uh, a a different point of view, the the the, Je the Jedi's uh, perspective um, from what was probably the worst episode of the of the series so far, at least to me, which was episode three, which deals with the origins of the twins Osha and and May, and what led them down their respective paths that we've seen in the series. One shows the light, one shows darkness, right? And, you know, if anyone thought this this series was going to finally find its footing at the very end, um, I'm very sorry to disappoint you <laughs> because I think this, at least for right now, because we have another episode, uh, is by far the worst episode of the entire series, which, again is saying something because so much of this show up to this point, for the most part, has been disappointing to downright terrible. But, but as I said, you know, uh, we, 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 we see everything from, from the Jedi's POV in this episode, and we get an explanation of what happened with, with the witches and the twins and, um, 
It's just really bad across the board from the from the writing, from the direction uh, to the acting and just the overall r- reveals of, of certain mysteries that which turns out weren't really mysteries to begin with. You know, it just displays an ineptness that is staggering to me. The first thing I just want to cover is just the Jedi themselves. You know, this this episode, and I guess just overall, the entire series just wants to display the Jedi as being either boring, flawed, and or evil. And it's it's continuing this this kind of like demystifying of of the Jedi themselves. Like a lot of people have said Disney Star Wars has has ruined the, the Jedi, you know, forever. And I would argue, and I've said this before, I feel like it started way before even then. I think it started all the way back in 1999 of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I know there's people that love the prequels out there, and I think the prequels have good ideas. They're just horrifically executed and are very piss poor. But in their in Lucas's attempts to uh, explain the history of of the Jedi and his in presentation of them, he's just made them uninteresting. And I think that's just carried forward for the last 25 years now. It's like I talked about this before in either past streams or past reviews of this show, and I kind of I really miss the idea of of not knowing exactly what the Jedi were. Like, when we first come to, like, hear the word Jedi being spoken by Ben Kenobi in the original 1977 Star Wars in A New Hope, when he's talking about it to Luke and how they were these amazing warriors and they were peacekeepers across the galaxy, but one of them, you know, were, were, was betrayed, of course, it was Anakin Skywalker, it was Darth Vader, and then, like, we, we saw Luke over the course of those movies become more and more like a Jedi going through those trials and tribulations, those, those struggles, until finally becoming a Jedi Knight and, and, you know, uh, defeating uh, the, the, the Emperor and redeeming his father. It's like, wow, the Jedi are, like, really cool. And I, outside of, like, the books and some comics and some video games that we've gotten, like Star Wars Natural Republic, honestly, the Jedi, since, like, the Phantom Menace fucking suck. <laughs> they really do. They're just really lame where we just learn about... You know, their, their overall structure, how you can't pursue a romantic relationship, everyone, how you have to cut yourself off from emotional ties. It's like, why? Like, that, 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 that to me is just so silly. They, 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 originally, they were just kind of portrayed as these, at least they always came across to me, as these, like, sci-fi, like, knights. Like, what's the sci-fi version of Medieval Knight? It's a, it's a Jedi. We're, yeah, we're honorable, and we're trying to do the best thing that we possibly can. Like, that makes them cool. There's, there's the mystique to them, right? There's, like, a legend. Like, kind of like an Arthurian legend to them. But with the prequels, it's just like, oh, these guys are just kind of a bunch of boring fucking monks that, that have a stick up their ass. They have a lightsaber up their ass. And, and they just suck. And I think the Jedi have honestly been lame... Uh, for quite some time, they've been lame since the Phantom Menace, and this, in this, in this series, just makes them more lame and less interesting. And one of the aspects of the Star Wars universe that I, I just wish they didn't keep trying to over-explain and deconstruct, because it's just making them dull, and that's on full display here. We find out like. In this, I'm, I'm going to spoil a lot of aspects of this episode because I don't think. Listen, either you're going to watch or you're not going to watch it. It's there's nothing really too uh, a big or bombastic uh, that that would would make it you know disappointing um, uh, if if you were spoiled for for this specific episode. But we find out the Jedi are on this this planet, uh, Brendock, Benny Doc, or whatever Brock, and uh, they're there because I guess it was originally a lifeless planet, but then all of a sudden you know the snap of the fingers, life just fucking. Start spring up for whatever reason. And I guess you follow Saul. You follow the Jedi that had been hunted by May earlier in the season. So Saul, you got uh, Trinity chat, you know. <laughs> you have you have uh, Torben. You got that little that little kid that with the receding hairline. Um, and you got the Wookiee, Talnaka. 
And apparently they've been on this planet for like seven weeks trying to figure what the fuck's going on here to make all this life spring up. That's what they're doing. And so I guess they just haven't been able to figure it out. They've been scanning moss. They've been analyzing rocks. One of the funniest sequences that I've seen, like, it, it would have been so cool. Like, hey, there's going to be a Wookiee Jedi. I hope they do some badass stuff with him in this show. Not really. Like, the first thing that we see with the Wookiee Jedi is that he's using, like, a, a literal metal detector. Not like, like, ooh, some cool piece of sci-fi technology to analyze the planet. No, he's using like a literal metal detector like an old man waddling across the beach trying to find loose change. Like, that's what, that's what this Wookiee is doing. It's like, it's so lame. And they're just trying to figure out, like, okay, why is the life come back to this planet? Uh, and, and Soul, which they reveal a lot about Soul. Soul is just kind of a fucking creep. In this show, he kind of, it's kind of revealed that he becomes so obsessed with uh, these two twin girls, mostly Osha. But for whatever reason, he just can't help himself and he starts stalking these two girls. He's like, I don't know what their whole deal is or what this witch, witch's coven's all about. All I know is I want that little girl. I'm just like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> That's kind of gross. That's like, it's kind of like gr grooming uh, be behavior, stalking uh, behavior. Um, and he's insistent. And he's like, and he goes and he, and he it, again, we, they use so much footage from episode three that it made me just say like out loud as I was watching this, why didn't they just combine both of these into just one episode? It would have, it wouldn't even been an hour at that point. It would have been like maybe like 45 minutes at most, just combined. I'm like, why do you have to go back to this again? But they're literally using the same clips and the same footage, and then they'll just put like a new shot in there. It's like, oh, now we're seeing it from Soul's perspective. And so he sees what all the, the all the witchy shit the witches are doing. He's like, oh, this ain't, this is bad news. This is bad news bears. And so he heads back and he's saying, like, listen, all these witches are, are, are creepy and weird, which is true. They are fucking, and they're cringe. They're creepy, weird, and cringe. And they're torturing these, these two little girls. We got to get them out there. Uh, you know, Carrie Ann Moss is like, I don't really want to do that. You know, uh, you have the other kid, Torben. He's just like, I want to go home. I got, man, for whatever reason, you have so many, so many of the male characters in this show are just fucking lame. They're either uh, lame, whiny, or pathetic. It's it's one of those it's one of those three things. It's one of those three things. And this kid Torben, who's the guy who's the kid that has like the hairline and looks like he's aged like forty fucking years. We see him here like sixteen years before he you know he is receding hairline. And his whole thing in this episode is this: I want to go back home. I want to go back home. I hate this planet. This is lame. You don't listen to me, master. And that's it. He's just whiny. It's like Anakin two point all over again, except instead of wanting to stop Padme, he wants to go back to Coruscant for some reason. You know, I, I'm like okay, and like that's his whole thing. Cal Naka just wants to find loose change, and and Carrie Ann Moss is just trying to wrangle all these two, but she's got to keep an eye on Soul because he keeps trying to get little girls for some reason. He keeps keep trying to abduct them. It's like, Soul, you got to stop that, right? And so they're all doing their own individual bullshit. And I guess they come up and they, and they bring in, and it's this prequel stuff again. And it ties in the prequels. Because apparently they learn that these little girls, these two, May and Osha, have a very, it's, it's, it's funny how they subtly change this. They say that, oh, they have an extremely high M count. And I'm like, what the fuck's M count? I didn't know what that meant. And I looked up what M count is supposed to stand for. Metachlorians. But they don't call it Metachlorians anymore, but that's what they say. It's like, oh, they have a fucking high M count, as high as Master Yoda. Great. Um, and I guess they come to the realization that they are something called a virgins in the Force. I guess it's, again, it's that immaculate conception. They weren't made between, like, two people. Like, you know, the good old-fashioned way, you know, stupid, sweaty stupid. Instead, they were made with the Force, which is the first they've ever seen this before. And they go, oh, this is a really big deal. And so these goddamn evil, scummy witches uh, shouldn't have them, right? And this is what sets up the inevitable conflict at, at the end. But I guess also, apparently, the Virgins is is the last time we heard this was, funny enough, in episode one, The Phantom Menace, when Qui-Gon Jinn's going on about, ah, Anakin Skywalker, he's a virgin in the Force, so this is before Anakin, so you're like, and like, oh, this is how this is all going to set up episode one, The Phantom Menace, and the creation of Anakin and everything. It's like, it's all going to originate here, which is like, oh, please don't do that. But at this point, you know, it's using that prequel bullshit. It's using that prequel logic. So 
of course it's bad because it was bad all the way back in 1999. But this then creates conflict with 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 the witches. You know, of course we saw everything from their their perspective and everything, and and we see everything that both May and Osha uh, did didn't see. Um, the thing is though, like it's very obvious that the show is making a concerted like a concert a concerted effort to make the Jedi look as evil and as scummy and as weird as possible, and like the witches as you know innocent as as, as possible right but it, it again it comes down to the execution of it and they fail when it comes to the execution like you have the two different perspectives there's this kind of divide within the covenant witches you got the 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 the, the first mama witch i forgot her name she she's the, the the leader of the group mama mama number one and then you got you got mama number two and she's man she's zabrak mama she's the one with the horns and shit and mama number one, she wants to keep the peace. She's like, all right, well, I don't like the Jedi, but my one daughter wants to go with them for some reason, even though she's never heard of Jedi before. But she's adamant about hanging out with this adult man who is obsessed with her for some reason. That, that's safe. So let's let, have her go with him. That, that'll be fun. And then May, who's just straight up a little psychopath. She doesn't want to go at all. And Zabrak mama's like, fuck all that. You know, I, I had him in my tummy. Um, I, w- I just want to kill the Jedi. That's what I want to do. And I want to instigate my little psych- uh, uh, a psychotic daughter to just start acting absolutely despicable and, and uh, uh, maniacal, right? And so, you know when, like, May suddenly, for whatever reason, episode three is, like, she goes and antagonizes her sister, like, grabs her book and says, I'm gonna murder you, which is a pretty huge escalation from, we need to stay here, I love you, sister, and then literally five minutes later, I wanna fucking murder you. And so, the Zabrak woman, the Zabrak mama, she basically tells her daughter, get mad, get really mad, and the daughter does that, and the acting is awful. Like, I don't know, again, I don't wanna harp too hard on the child actors here, you know, again, you could be the most talented act in the world, but if you're given a shit script and a shit direction, which they most certainly were given for this specific show, um, you're going to give a shit performance. But man, it's like every scene with them is just rough with these kids. They're just, they're just not good. They're just not good. But the Zabrak mama is just like, you know what? Get mad. Fuck the Jedi. They're on their way to kidnap you. And she's like, oh, I hate that. And but I don't know why the Zabrak, I don't, I don't know if the Zabrak mama then wanted her, her daughter then to start, try to kill her sister. So you see the whole scene. So the, the big thing, the big confusing thing was like, okay, well, how would that fire start? Because May grabs the book and she sets it on fire. It's like, oh shit, which then causes this entire stone complex, completely made out of stone to catch fire and burn down and explode. It's like, well, there must've been something else. It couldn't have just been that because that would be fucking stupid, right? Like that would be really dumb if, if, the, if the cause of this entire fire, which ends up murdering all the witches, was because of May. Like there's going to be a twist in her, right? Of course, that would just make sense, right? That would make sense. Well, it turns out, chat, <laughs> May was the reason why that whole place burned down. It wasn't because Manny Jacinto was in the background going, hey, 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 hey. Oh, there was some other element or the, the Jedi did this and that. It's like, no, it was May. <laughs> she literally took the book, set it on fire, threw that shit down. And for whatever reason, I guess this, this is the, we, we now know stone, stone is the most flammable substance in the entirety of the Star Wars universe. Because for whatever reason, the entire complex starts burning down because what of what May did. And I was like, that is dumb. That doesn't even make any sense. At least establish that, ah, the stone's flammable. It's like, no, it's just, the whole thing starts to go up, right? And so May's like, yeah, like she, was, she was like, yeah, I'm going to kill my sister. And she wanted to do that. And she kind of starts panicking because maybe she didn't want to like burn down the whole complex. But still, it's like, that's dumb. That's really, really dumb. And it looks really dumb. But then we get to the whole, the witch conflict and the Jedi conflict uh, 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 of it all. And it just gets really, really silly. So mama number one and Zabrak mama, mama number two. You know, they, they confront the, the, the Jedi, and it's very, very tense. Everyone's kind of uh, freaking out at this point, right? And uh, May comes running out, and Saul thinks, Oh, are you Osha? Are you Osha? Osha, are you okay? And she's like, Mama, Mama. Oh, by the way, 
both uh, the, the actresses that play the little girl, they, they say three things. Either it's Osha, May, or Mama. And you will quickly get annoyed at how often they say it. And it's usually just one after the other. So it's constantly like, Osha, May, Mama, Osha, May, Mama. You can almost like, put a beat to it. It could be part of a song or something. But very annoying. Soul's like, oh, shit, uh, uh, oh, shit, but it's really May. And then, and then for whatever reason, mama number one, because then the, the place starts exploding, and mama number one, who's the leader, sees her daughter, and she suddenly becomes this horrific, giant, evil smoke monster. L literally goes, Aah! it's horrifying. And everyone's like, whoa, when you see that, right? And, and, and then for whatever reason... Uh, the, the May starts dissolving. It looks like the mom's like, I guess I'm going to kill my kid now or whatever. I, I don't know. But she starts dissolving May. And then Soul rightfully goes, fuck, don't do that. And stabs her with the lightsaber. She's this horrific monster, right? And, and, and then, you know, she then goes back to her human form. She's like, ah, before I die, I got to let you know, I would have, um, I would have let Osha go with you. But, you know, you Jedis are a bunch of assholes. And you know what? You're going you're gonna to get yours someday. It's going to destroy your order. Blah. It's just like, I'm sorry. But um, I would have done the same fucking thing that Soul would have done. If you suddenly just become this giant, horrific, demonic-looking smoke monster and you start evaporating a child, I feel like I would also, like, if I had a lightsaber, like, activate it and then, ah, and then slash you or stab you. And so it's like, oh, how could you do that, Soul? It's like, fuck that <laughs> okay i would have done the same thing and this causes the whole thing to escalate everyone starts fighting zabrak mama she possesses the wookie so if everyone wanted that like wookie lightsaber fight scene you get it here i don't think it's very well choreographed at all i think it kind of looks fucking lame a lot of what again i i have a bit of a bias here where i just i'm not a big fan of wire work i just it just it looks it looks too floaty to me and that's very much the case here. And so, yeah, she goes up the Wookiee's butthole, possesses him. But then, this is weird. So then, she goes up the Wookiee's butthole and possesses him. But then, I guess all the other witches are aware of the conflict that's going on. And then we cut inside the building, the coven, and all the witches are like also possessing him because they're all like ah they're like going back and forth like this and you know doing the power of one the power of two the power of many lame and they're going back and forth and you know all the all the you know all the guys are fucking up because all the listen if you're a male character in this you're just, you're lame you're lame and you're stupid it's, it's you're either you're either a creep you're either a creep you're either lame or you're stupid it's those three things in this right but thankfully carrie and moss Trini, she shows up and she gets the 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 smoke uh, Zabrak mama out of Kalnaka's butthole, which then kills all the witches for some reason. <laughs> like they all just drop over dead. And I'm like, what 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 happened? <laughs> what do you mean? And they just, they go ah, they just die. It's like okay. Uh, and so yeah, and then it's like oh, I guess the Jedi. I guess technically killed them, but they're all kind of fucking monsters to begin with. We also get this whole scene earlier of Torben, who's like, I want to go back home. Uh, where the the mama number one, she, like, remember that scene where she possesses him and his eyes go black? She starts, like, fucking with him in, in his own mind, and he's like, I, just, I know you just want to go back home. You know what? Just accept the dark side, <laughs> and you can go back home. He's like, you know, that sounds like a good plan. That sounds like a good plan to me. And so that's he succumbs to that, because he just really wants to go back to Coruscant, Chef, yeah, for whatever fucking reason. He wants to go to, you know, good old, uh, what's, what's his name? The, the, that runs that 50s diner, Dex, Dex Jetser, that uh, the Obi-Wan always goes to. He's want to go get that Dex grub. Um, so, yeah, lame. Anyway, the, all the witches uh, are dead at this point. And then Soul's like, ah, Osha, I really want that little girl. I really want her really bad. And so he goes, and then we get the scene where Osha, who, again, are either saying, Osha, May, Osha, May, even though they're, like, literally five feet apart, and they have the whole sequence when they're, they're on this bridge, and there's maybe, like, I don't know, like a three-foot, like you know divide between them it's like you can just hop over and get get her or whatever but they're just going like this oh sure may where's mama mama's dead you know that's what they're doing again it, it, it's that's what they say they either say oh sure, uh may or mama uh in a variety of different orders so you know they, they, they change it around a little bit uh soul's just like oh no and he he grabs the bridge where like the bridge about to give way and it becomes a good son situation <laughs> so 
I don't know if you guys, we did a watch party for this movie. It's a great movie, actually. The Good Son with Macaulay Culkin and Elijah Wood, who were both very, very young uh, when they made this movie. And, Mac and Macaulay Culkin, he's basically playing like an evil version of Kevin McAllister. He's a serial killer. And he just, he just does all these horrible things. And he's pitting a lot of these awful things on Elijah Wood, who's like visiting uh, his family, you know, uh, his aunt and uncle, uh, who are the, 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 the parents of Macaulay Culkin. And at one point in the movie, like they're fighting over this cliff, they fall over this cliff, and the mother, she grabs both of them, and she has to make a choice. Like, do I save Elijah Wood, who's been good, or do I save my psychotic son, who probably killed my young son and tried, has been trying to murder my daughter throughout the entire movie? And she inevitably chooses Elijah Wood, and she lets Macaulay Culkin fucking hit those rocks hard, and he explodes on the rocks. So I thought it was pretty badass and cool. Uh, he does the same thing here. I don't know why he just didn't grab them both of the force. I don't know why he's holding this probably, you know, two-ton bridge. It's like, just grab both of them. They're like 50 pounds soaking wet, so you can do it, buddy. But he lets, May he lets her little ass drop. Ah! She falls, good riddance. And he saves Osha. And the Jedi, they, they, they get her off. You know, he's like, ah, I got my, got my girl. I got my little girl that I wanted. And then they, they go back to the ship, and Indara's like, okay, we're going we're gonna to tell the Jedi exactly what happened. We're going to tell them that May set a fire, and, it caught, and, and the, all the witches are dead, and it destroyed their home. And from a certain point of view, uh, did you guys get that reference? From a certain point of view, wink, uh, we're telling the truth. And that's the episode. And it's so goddamn lame. And in between, like, all the character interactions, just, they don't feel real. They just don't, they just don't feel like real people. Like, I don't, like, why is Soul so obsessed with this little girl? There's no explanation as to why he's like, I just want that little girl. Like, why? why? You know? Why is Torben just being whiny? He just wants to go back home. Let, let's, let's maybe get into that. Maybe he has, like, issues, you know? Uh, you know, like the, the, the coven of the witches, they're kind of fucking evil. <laughs> and so I know you're trying to betray them as oh, they're actually misunderstood. It's like, nah, they became evil looking smoke monsters. And quite frankly, they got what they fucking deserved. And so I'm just kind of, I'm left with, with, with no, uh, I'm not engendered towards any of these people or any of these characters. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, uh, either mostly apathetic or, or, or frustrated. Not even mad. I'm not even mad. I'm, I'm really not at this point. I'm either apathetic or, um, um, or frustrated. Because this is, and this is the penultimate episode. The penultimate episode is supposed to set up like, okay, here it is. This, this is where it's really exciting, and we're going to get that big finale. And sometimes the penultimate episode is the most exciting episode of a season. Usually that's where the big event, the inciting event, where all the season's been, been building towards, boom, it explodes. And then maybe the last episode's like the fallout. How do we deal with that? It's just like, you could have easily used this footage, which is maybe like, I don't know, 20 minutes of new footage, and with the clip show that they then had for this episode, Put it in episode three, and you would have had, like, maybe a 45-minute episode instead of, like, 23 minutes that like you had that one week. It's, fu it's bonkers. It's absolutely crazy. And it just, it's just disappointing. There's, there's, it, this is a show that maybe has a couple of good moments or good ideas. Like, Manny Jacinto, I think, does a great, he's not even in this episode at all. He's not mentioned because of the flashback. I thought maybe he'd be there, but no, no, he's not. Um, and we're just, we're just left with kind of nothing. We're left, we're, we're left with less than nothing. <laughs> Feels like it's, it, 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 and, I, and I say that because much in the same way that the prequels took away from the, the Jedi themselves um, by demystifying them by deconstructing this this does it too it makes the jedi just look dumber creepier and more boring it makes them one of the least interesting aspects of the star wars universe which is a a, a, a shame which is which is a goddamn sin <laughs> for for star wars and uh, I'm going to keep watching. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch the finale because I'm just like, how are you going to fucking wrap all this up? Like they said, like, I bet, I bet you they, they, they're not because that's the thing. Because Leslie Hedlund, who's the, the creator of this show, she says, like, we're going to do a, we want to do a season two. And so we purposely uh, uh, haven't, ha like, aren't going to, like, answer everything, you know? And I'm thinking, like, that's a huge issue. That's a huge problem because I don't think that I would be shocked if this gets a second season. Because if this is what I can expect for a season two, then, man, you failed so incredibly thoroughly. Uh, this is by far...
the worst episode of the of the of the series so far, which is saying something. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's that's Star Wars: The Acolyte, Chad. You know the power of one, the power of two, the power of bleh. Forget about it. Power of many. No fucking thank you. Just very, very disappointing. But that's how I feel. Like I'm sure there's a lot of people that I mean I know some people that are actually liking this show that do dig it. You know, I'm not one of those people. I maybe like a, a few things in it. Again, Manny Jacinto I think is great as Kamir, the stranger, or whatever the fuck he is. Um, but outside of that, this is this is this to me, I feel confident in saying this at this point. I mean, we have one more episode left, but that's gonna be like what, twenty five minutes anyway. I feel pretty confident in saying that this is the worst TV show ever made with Star Wars. It's easily the worst Star Wars TV show I've seen. Like, and again, we've gotten some bad ones. You know, we have we've had some great ones. Like Andor's amazing. The first two seasons of Mandalorian are pretty good, but this is worse than Mandalorian season three. This is worse than Obi Wan Kenobi. This is worse than the Book of Bubba Fat. It's worse than all those. You know, um, I had to. I actually I had to take a break while watching this episode. I'd be like, I can't. I gotta pause it. I paused it, and then I was on my phone. I was I was watching shorts. I was on TikTok. I was responding to comments, and then I came back and I finished. It. That's how painful it was because it was it was so cringe. It's so embarrassing. And that's Star Wars The Acolyte. It's embarrassing. But what about you guys? How do you feel about this uh, this episode? <laughs> I don't feel. I don't feel. Like, bad for like, you know, there's not, again, I like what you dislike, you know, like what you like, dislike what you dislike, you know, everything, of course, is subjective, you know, and we can have a very, you know, um, um, earnest and, and honest conversation about this show. Five minutes later. Oh, a take a seat, Jedi. Yeah, straight up. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they lean into, like, the Jedi are just fucking kind of like, um, they're, 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 they're grooming kids. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? They're just grooming children. Oh, God, they're abducting and grooming. It's like, what? From a certain point of view, the show is stupid. Palpatine probably, yeah. Oh, I bet you. Oh, here's the thing. Now, I'm just going to guess. So you speak of Palpatine. So I don't. he's not going to be in the in the series. It wouldn't make any sense. He wouldn't be born yet. Although, who, who fucking knows? Um, so the one thing that we don't see in this episode is that we don't see the Mama, Mama Zabrak die, whatever her name is. Coral. Coral! We don't see her die. We see her sucked out of the butthole of Kalnaka. But, like, she... We don't see her body. Like, we see the body of Mama Number One. We see the body of all the other witches who are fucking dead. They all killed over. We don't see her. And I'm wondering if they're going to set her up to be the one behind everything that she's actually going to be um, Manny Jacinto's master. Like, he, she's the Sith master, and I hope they don't say this, but I would not be shocked if they do. If they're going to do, in like, another retcon, I guess technically not even a retcon because technically, like, the Plagueis novel is not canon anymore, which is actually a really good book, the Plagueis novel. But um, they're going to make her Darth Plagueis. That's just, that's, I'm not, ba I'm just, I'm just, I'm not basing this on anything or any rumors I've heard. I'm just like, you know what? If, man, I would not be shocked if that, that's how this ends is like, and I am Darth Plagueis. It's like, whoa. And that, oh my God. If they do that, that's going to be so embarrassing. So embarrassing. <sighs> Who are you bullshitting? A space priest going after a young child. Wait to get, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. Halo Reads of Power got season two. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, compared to others, I'm just comparing it to Star Wars show. I think this is just the worst show within the Star Wars universe that we've gotten. Easily. Easily at this point. Skeleton Crew will save us. They have not shown anything from Skeleton Crew. I don't know what that is. I've heard it's Goonies in space. Worse than Ahsoka? Yeah, I think it's worse than Ahsoka. And Ahsoka was not good, uh, but it's worse than Ahsoka. Maybe you should watch the Young Jedi Adventures instead. Uh, the preschool Star Wars cartoon Disney has out. Well, that's a much better show. It's also in the Republic timeline. There you go. Maybe. I don't understand the people who liked it. No, I mean, listen, if you like it, I think I think there... I highlighted some things that I actually like about the show. I think Manny Jacinto is very good. Um, I, I like the time period, you know? So I think there's some things you can point to and go like, hey, I'm liking this, how this is working. Uh, but that's just me. 
That should be. But everything else, I've just, yeah, I just fucking, this is bad. <laughs> I just really just like it. God, tree, a hot hand with you. Hi, Chris. Started dinner and a load of laundry while you're ranting. Yeah, I was ranting. This was a rant review. Straight up. Straight up a rant. But good to have you here. I'm too busy finishing the Bear C3. What do you think of the Bear, Chris Harris? Um, I've heard mixed things about it. She is Plagueis. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked. I would not be shocked. I'm not basing on anything. I'm just thinking, like, what's the one last... Like, what's the thing they can end this show with that will might get people excited? Not, not even excited. I mean, maybe in their mind excited, but, but to generate a reaction. And I think that would be it. It would be that. Uh, which would just piss so many people off. <sighs> this isn't a review for Rob, but Prince of Thieves it is not. <laughs> Jerry being Grim and Chill and prequels, uh, Luke Change. And, yeah, no, but that's the thing. Like, before the prequels and stuff, so when, like, because I've read a lot of the Expanded Universe books, and I really enjoy them. They're fun. Like, Luke, he restarted the Jedi Academy. Like, you know. Um, and this is before, like, the rules were established for what the Jedi were later shown as in the prequels. And so Luke, he actually, he goes back to Yavin 4, and he establishes, he starts finding, like, Force, and it's not like kids, he's, I mean, some of them are kids, but then he finds people that are adults, that are his age, and are even older than him, and he brings them to, to Yavin to, to train them, but he doesn't, like, institute, like, these, um, these very regimented, like, ways of life the Jedi do. Like, he allows his students to have, like, romantic relationships with each other or with other people that they find on their adventures. He doesn't institute, like, you have to wear this. You got to wear these robes. It's like, no, wear whatever the fuck you want, you know? And that's what some of the, all these stories were, were about, is finding these people from all these different walks of life and just training them in the Force. Uh, it wasn't until the prequels and Phantom Menace where they started to establish this weird monk culture with them, you know, which... it. it that wasn't, I know it's hard to separate because it's been 25 years, but that wasn't like in the the original trilogy. That wasn't a part of it, you know? The Jedis were more like these mystical, magical knights. At least that's how I interpret it. And then they then there was, but Lucas changed it, you know? Or he he expanded on it. And, uh, and not for the better. <sighs> Do I see stars having a huge comeback? Not now. Now with the current... Um, um, people in place. Like, you're going to have to gut Lucasfilm. You're going to have to gut it. That's the only way. You got to get rid of... You, you got to put... You have to put people in there. It's not, it's not about... I think it helps that you have people who are passionate about Star Wars that like Star Wars, but that's not the thing that, to me... That's not the thing that's paramount. Because look at Tony Gilroy. You just need to have people come in there who actually are talented directors and writers and understand characterization and and expand the world of Star Wars in the, in the same way that Tony Gilroy did with for Andor. Like, his whole show, it's not just about Andor and his humble origins and him joining the Rebellion, becoming a spy, doing the dirty work of the Rebellion, which is great. But that whole show was about what is it like to live under fascism in Star Wars? What was it like for the fucking schlubs, the schmucks, the blue-collar workers who, li who aren't Jedi, who aren't smugglers, who aren't heroes of the Rebellion? Like, what's it, what's it, what's it like for the common woman and, 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 and man living under the Empire's boot? And they executed that wonderfully. Tony Gilroy and his people executed that wonderfully. And it expanded Star Wars. It made it great. Even though he doesn't, he's not a star. He said, said like, yeah, I'm not really into this. But he's surrounded with people who are knowledgeable. His thing that he was, that he was adamant about was like, I want to tell a competent story. I want to give people characters that they, that they like, that they can fall in love with, and make this world really interesting and scary. And he accomplished that. Uh, this, 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 this doesn't. So many of these other shows just, just don't. You know, and... It's just so frustrating where you, you just have this whiplash of quality. It's like, what the hell is going on? So, yeah, you gotta you, you need to gut it. You got to get rid of Kathleen Kennedy. You got to get rid of Dave Filoni. You got to get rid of all these people. Just holding this franchise, frankly, back, you know? Um, I just want really good stories in this universe. I, you know, it doesn't, I don't, at this point, it doesn't matter. Like, oh, we're going to bring in this reference or this thing from this book. It's like, I don't fucking care. 
you know, just 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 tell me like really cool stories and 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 get and set it in different parts of the galaxy, set it thousands of years in the past, thousands of years in the future. Just do that. But at the end of the day, it just 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 write something that's competent. Write something that makes sense. Don't have one. Don't have a character that goes like, "I love my sister," and then five minutes later goes like, "I want to murder you." It doesn't make any sense. So, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so, do I see having to come back? Not for the foreseeable future. You got to gut the company. Later, the first two seasons, the season three uh, kind of uh, feel wheel spinny. That's what I've heard so far, but still has great stuff. Episode eight of Barry Director is really fucking good. Oh, she directed something. That's neat. If you're going to piss Star Wars fans off, go all the way. I mean, yeah, they're, I mean, I'm not even mad. I'm, it's it's not even like I'm mad about like I, you know, listen, start, people. I I know you have these prequel fans that have, that think the prequels are amazing. I do not. Um, you know, it's like we've been here before with this franchise. You know, it, it has had its 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 peaks and it's had its valleys. It's deep fucking valleys. So, you know, I. Is it possible? Sure. Is it going to happen in the foreseeable future? I don't think so. I really don't. Um, but I will, I will watch the content that comes, and if there's stuff that, that is interesting, that is good, and I will, I'll let you guys know. You know, I'm going to be honest and earnest about it, you know, but, um, but yeah, seeing shit like this, it does not instill confidence. How would I rank the Star Wars show so far? Uh, Andor's number one. Andor, uh, the Mando season one, season two, I guess, are kind of right next to each other, I suppose. I don't know. Flip them. Whatever. They're, Andor, Mando season one, season two. Uh, pfft, man, I don't fucking know after this. I guess Mando season three? Um... I, God, I don't even know. The book, uh, Ahsoka maybe? I guess Ahsoka after that. Ahsoka after that. Um, or maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I would go, maybe I would go, and like the only, the only three I think, the only good ones are Andor and, and the first two seasons of Mandalorian. And then maybe I'd go with Ahsoka and then maybe Mando season three and then Obi-Wan Kenobi and then the book of Bubba Fat and then this. The Acolyte. That'd be me. Uh, they may need people who may be familiar with the franchise, but not. For, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, sure. Familiar for the franchise or surround yourself with people who are knowledgeable, but just get get these just very talented writers and filmmakers here that know how to tell like a really good story. Like, again, I'm not saying Tony, I'm not one of those people who are like, Tony Gilroy should run Star Wars. I'm saying that he should be part of an apparatus that is creating content within this universe. You know? Um, yes. But... Yeah, they just they, they, they these the people they got in in place. Many of them, many of them, not all of them, but many of them just don't clearly don't know what the fuck they're doing. Or they're just in a, they just don't have the experience. And it's not it's not experience within Star Wars. That's not it. It's it's they don't have the experience as as writers, as showrunners, as directors. It's like I don't know where they're getting these people. They're like off the street or something. Like what's their credentials? You know, it just doesn't make any sense. Um. Ace Rock, Ace Rock, thank you for subscribing 50 months. 50 months of being pumped full of juice, overflowing of juice. You're welcome. Ace Rock, thank you so much. 50 months of incredible support. Good to have you here, good sir. Hope you're doing well. Yeah. I could say that Kim Wexler looking woman. And, and I loved her though. No, no. I th but the thing is, that character was great though. That character made you feel that way because she was just, she was a perfect bad guy. She was a bureaucrat. And, and she, she excelled at that. But I think in, in uh, 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 Deidre, her name was, she's like Agent Deidre. She, she basically works for the Secret Service uh, the, um, the, of, of the Empire. And she was so cool. And she was, she was grounded. She was brutal. She was cold. She was efficient. She was competent. You know? Oh, you know, Star Wars, you know what the fans want? You're fired, yeah. Look at someone should make John Favreau and Tony Gilroy execs instead. No, I don't want, I don't want um, um, Tony Gilroy as an executive. No. I, I want him to... Just keep making content. It not, not, doesn't have necessarily be Star Wars. I just want him to keep making good content, you know, good, good TV shows and, and, and movies. I don't want him to be pigeonholed as the star as a Star Wars guy. I, I just I don't want that. 
I, I just, they, you just need to get these, you just got to get fucking people that know what they're doing. And it's, and again, it's not like you need to get people that are fanboys of Star Wars or fangirls of Star Wars. Like, it's, no, you need to get people who have a pedigree that people have, who have, have proven themselves, uh, whether it comes to movies or TV shows and like know what they're fucking doing. Like, that's, that's what you need. That's what Star Wars desperately needs right now. I don't care if, like, you know, they're going to make a reference to this thing from this book. Like, at, at, at this point, it doesn't even matter. Like, it really doesn't. It's like, I just want someone who knows how to have characters talk to each other. <laughs> I just, I just want, I just, I just want that, <laughs> like where, where the conversation feels natural. That's what I'm, that's what I'm asking for at this point. Oi, oi, oi. Uh, Dad, you're going, Calcus is the best Jedi we've had in years. I, yeah, I would agree. I would agree, Isaac. I'm checked out stories related to Jedi. So Cal, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah, Cal is apps in terms of like a Jedi Force character. A hundred percent with you. You're right. Cal is the best one we've gotten. I mean, I mean to be completely honest with you guys, probably since Luke. <laughs> be real, you know, because you know he just he just is. Yeah, he's the best probably since Luke. Luke Skywalker. Ice Rock, I really like the acolytes. It actually got me to become interested in Star Wars again. Ways I didn't think about. That's fine. That's fine. You know, listen. That, that as I said before, I was talking about this early Ice Rock. You know, I think that's totally fine. As I've always said, like what you like, dislike you dislike. I've highlighted some things I actually like about the show that I do think are good. I. As you can tell, I have my issues with it, but um, you know, not not here to dismiss your like for the show or anyone else's or any of the other Star Wars stuff or any other content in general. You know, it's just you know, just share my opinion. <sighs> and it was like Basil Garlaka meets the expense. Uh, sure, sure, yeah, yeah, T totally, yeah, 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 yeah. Wasn't this one by the Russian doll people? It's one by Leslie Headland, who I'm completely unfamiliar with as a as a filmmaker. But she did Russian Doll, which I've I've heard is good. I don't know. I've never watched it. Never seen a single episode. Never seen a single clip. She did that. I don't know what else she's done. Um, but if if is like I would actually ask if people who have seen that show and the acolyte are these things. Are you noticing like similarities, or are they completely different? I'm just not sure. Hey, sir, I don't think Tony Gore has any interest in telling more Star Wars stories. He wanted to tell Cassie Andor stories. He had a very specific idea he was going for outside of that. He is interested in, uh, I think that's what makes Andor work. Yo, I agree. No, 100%. That's why I'm not I'm not one of those people that's like, Tony Gore should run Star Wars. I'm not. I'm not. I feel like he's, uh, I, I agree with you. He he saved Rogue One <laughs> from, from uh, what's his name? Gareth Edwards. He saved that movie. And he was passionate about that era and those characters in the Star Wars universe, and he's telling that story, and I think he's doing a great job. But I, yeah, I agree. I don't. He's. I don't think he should run Star Wars. Like that's not who should run Star Wars right now. I be honest. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, it's not the people who are currently there. I'll tell you that much. Um, but what should be done is that they should be going after people like Tony Gilroy to make this content. You know, I'm not saying keep them there forever, like in perpetuity. I'm just saying you need to get competent people in there that know what they're doing. Like it, I, it, it, it you can bring in the the people, you can surround them with people who are knowledgeable, which they, he's talked about. He's like, in 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 Andor, he's like, I'm not as knowledgeable about stars uh, as as other people, but I but I have people around me that that help fill that in. That like, for example, he talked about. Um, um, Stellan Skarsgård's character, who's great. He he operates like a little shop. It's a front on Coruscant, right? Because he's actually a you know um, he has his own rebel cell, and they fill his shop up with like artifacts that Star Wars has. Be like, oh, that's this, that's that, and he's like, I didn't know anything about this stuff, but I, he went to the people and said like, what artifacts should be in this shop? And they said, oh, get something like this, get something like that, get this Jedi holocron, get this Mandalorian ancient armor, like shit like that, right? And so, and that's that's the window dressing, okay? That's the that's the easy shit. That's the stuff I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. Because at the end of the day, the thing that I, I that I want is just people who are competent enough as filmmakers to make me feel. Uh, uh, um, invested in these stories and these characters and make this world feel feel real in which I feel like he accomplished and him and his and his fellow collaborators accomplished that Andor. I'm not saying he should run it like the entire thing. I'm just saying 
just get people to do these shows or these movies that know what they're fucking doing, who are just competent storytellers in general. I don't really, yeah, they're fans of Star Wars, cool, that's great. But I don't think that's a necessity. Um, so who they should get to run Star Wars, right? I have no clue. I'm not gonna, I, I, you know, that's gonna take a, lot, a significant amount of time. Again, it's not the people who are running it now. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, Taddy Fatsack, what a name. Four twenty sixty nine. Just need people who actually like Star Wars to make Star Wars. I I disagree. I, I well, well, it's it's. I'll read, let me finish reading the rest of the comment. So many career hacks and power these days who are just uh, want to be activists in every sphere of of life. It's it's it's. I don't think a person being obsessed with Star Wars is is like the 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 most important thing. Uh, when it comes to telling these stories, because I mean, as I brought up and Ace Rock brought up and all these other people brought up, Tony Gilroy is not obsessed with Star Wars. He wasn't even a big fan of it. He came in and he saved Rogue One from Gareth Edwards and he, and he made Andor, but he surrounded him with people who are knowledgeable about it. He just told a really good story that's set within the Star Wars universe. That's what Star Wars needs more than anything. It doesn't need super fans. You know, Dave Filoni's super fan. Is Dave, is Dave Filoni saving Star Wars right now? No. And he's, I think you can make an argument. People say he's the next George Lucas. I think you can make an argument that George Lucas ain't going to save Star Wars. I don't think he ever did, despite it being his creation. Like, you just need competent filmmakers in this. That's just me. Oh, man. But, yeah. Uh, Clumber says, I love Russian Doll season one. Haven't seen season two. I like OG stars, prequels, and on. Uh, not so much. Yeah. A struck today's Andor's story about dismantling systems of oppression, a warning against fascism, and also examines what it really means to rebel. That's what won me over. It is showing you what it takes to take on corporate and fascist power. Yeah, sure. And it accomplished that very well. Yeah. I think trying to run stars to replicate the MCU is a fool's. I, I don't think they're even trying to do that. I, I don't. I don't. Yeah. It's. I think you should have someone who is in charge of all these. Like you know the the the, the entire Lucas you need a hell Lucas film of course but I don't even know who to I don't even know who to pick I I, I really don't know you know um you know we'll see but uh yeah it's this uh, Star Wars for right now it doesn't it doesn't need super fans it needs people who are competent <laughs> more than anything more than anything but there you go. Now they've seen Filoni stuff has impressed me since Mr. Harris. You saw the rails starting to come off of Lucas Star Wars even. Yeah, exactly. Even you, you, you can you, yeah, you want to go back, you can even say Return of the Jedi 100 percent when he changed the the Wookiees to Ewoks. Like, you know. It's not like th this is just like a new problem. I think you have certain people that like to paint it. It's like, oh, Star Wars, it's it was it's been perfect, you know, it was perfect before Disney acquired. It's like, no. <laughs> okay. I think there's definitely there is definitely some rose tinted glasses shit going on. With um with the prequels and I, it's been weird to see that because I I was I was like in the middle when those movies were coming out like aware of all that shit and uh it's been interesting then to see like all these people who are relatively younger than me like ten or so years because I'm in my early thirties to get people like in their in their in their like early twenties who are just like adamant that the prequels are like the greatest Star Wars movies ever and it's just like what. But that's the way it is, and it's it's kind of befuddling. It's just like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Um, but but yeah, so the acolyte, not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the acolyte. Not a fan of the acolyte. But I'll uh, watch the last episode. I'll let you guys know what I think about it. But man, rough. Hey, chat, let's move on to something I actually do like. We're gonna play some Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth. Rebirth. Is Papa a dog? Does he do anything anymore? I don't feel like he does anything. I don't know what the hell he's doing. I mean, episodes one, thankfully one more. It'll be the, it'll be the, it'll be one more, and then it'll be it, and it'll be done with all of it. No, all that. I said it was my first Star Wars movie. I saw it in the theater when I was eight, and I loved it. I watch it now, and yeah, this kind of sucks. Well, that's the thing. I talked about this before too. Like I was lucky. I I watched the um, the original trilogy in theaters when they released them in 1997. I was very little, but I remember going, "This is amazing." And then I saw episode one. A fan of Menace 99, and I loved it too. I loved it. I was like, this is great. Uh, it wasn't until I attacked the clones, which came out 2002, I want to say. It was three years later, right? 2002, I remember watching, going, this is fucking, this is boring. And that's when I was becoming just a little, like, uh, you know, I, I started forming, like, I was I, I was getting out of that 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 phase of my life, because every, every person, every kid has this, like, everything's great. This is awesome. I love it. And then you become more discerning as you get older. You become more discerning and bitter. 
And then I saw Attack the Clones. I was like, this movie sucks. It's so boring. It's like, what? And, uh, I, and then I... And then I realized, like, wait a minute. And I went back and I watched a Phantom Menace. Like, oh, this sucks too. It has like a handful of good moments. Like the Darth Maul lightsaber battle is fun. Like the pod racing scenes fun. But then it's surrounded by bullshit. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people experience that uh, with with the with the prequels initially. But then, I think with Attack the Clones, that's when people started to go like, wait a minute. Revenge of the Sith has a lot of emotional weight in concept. Uh, yeah, in concept, yes. The execution to set that uh, to set that film did not work aside from its own weaknesses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Like again, I think the prequels have good ideas, just none of them are executed well, like at all. Like the the fall of Anakin Skywalker is a great idea, right? But it's not like how it's shown to us is just awful, <laughs> you know. Um, I mean, you know, we've talked about this before. We've talked about ad nauseum. <sighs> I started to evolve. I mean, that's what happens. You, well, you become more discerning as you, as, you, as you get older. You start to notice things. You start to form more dislikes and likes. You know, you pick up on certain things. It's just what happens when you get older. Um, that was the... That's what happened to Star Wars with me. But... Peter Trilogy sucked because George was allowed to direct all three films and he is not a good director. You know, it's, uh, I mean, again, I could go into all that in just a bit, but I don't want to, I don't want to keep talking about this ad nauseum. <laughs> I've already talked about a lot. It's, um, you know, no, I, I, he, 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 George Lucas, like I, like a lot of directors became incredibly self-indulgent. He surrounded himself with yes men that never questioned him. And, um, that led to the films that we got. Um, you know, and, uh, it's, it's disappointing. It's disappointing because there are interesting ideas within those scripts and within those films. It's just so, they're just surrounded by bullshit. And that's what's uh, sad and frustrating. Yeah. Oh God. Many people who defend the people just respond well to concepts and willing to overlook how they're executed. Oh, sure. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hundred percent. De definitely. Definitely, definitely. Probably I've been guilty of that in the past. I'm sure I have too. Um, I'm trying to think of an example, but I'm sure I have. It happens, you know. Again, we all have our likes and dislikes. There we go. Windful evil instead of spiraling into despair. Oh, Ranger of the Sith should uh, have happened over years instead of like a couple days. Feel like they just slipped a switch. And it, I know, like him turning evil was just so unearned. It's again, I've talked about this before, and I think it's it, it's a, it's a it's a it's a conversation that I can go over again and expand on but I want to play some Final Fantasy but you're right you're 100% right it's like they rushed all that the romance of Padme is awful you know oh you're you know I hate sand it's rough course and irritating and it gets everywhere he's such a creep she's a groomer too it's just ugh it's gross 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 there's so many so many but you know what you know what Check out my reviews. You you guys want to see my me breaking down the Star Wars prequels and, and the original trilogy? I got to do the sequel trilogy one day in Rogue One, but in Solo. But if you guys want to really see me get into these movies, um, let me link you um, my reviews. These are from a few years ago. But they were very, they were very, very, very fun to do back in the day. Highly recommend them. God, some of this footage is so fucking old. Jesus. If you guys want to look at that, boom. There's my Phantom Menace review from three years ago, which was a very fun review. So you got that. A lot of fun stuff. A lot of fun stuff. Gaming time! Time Final Fantasy. Let's go. You convinced me, Chris. Star Wars was never good, to be honest. No, 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 no. I, don't, I never said that. To be honest, my best memories of Star Wars come from the flurry of Star Wars games that came out between the 90s to late 90s. I love those games too. Um, it's not, it, no, I, I'm not, I'm not one of those people that's saying Star Wars, I'm not one of those guys like, that's like Star Wars, like I hate those, those, those people I think are obnoxious where you have these people that just hate genre content. It's not just Star Wars, but just genres like sci science fiction, fantasy, horror, it's all bad. Um, it's not that. Uh, I, I, I think the original trilogy is great. You know, even, even Return of the Jedi with it. And like, of course, any, you could, you could, you could, you could deconstruct any movie out there, right? And, and find, 
numerous flaws in it. The original trilogy, I think, is a fantastic trilogy. It's great science fiction. It's great fantasy. There's wonderful characters, great action sequences. You know, it's very close to my heart. I mean, I have a Star Wars poster. You see my Star Wars poster right back there in the first movie from New Hope. You don't see it up here. I got Empire Strikes Back right in front of me. There's a wonderful Star Wars content up there. The original movies, I think, are very good. The There's some great books. There's some great comics. There's some great video games. Of course, of course, Rogue One, I think, is is very good. There's, of course, no, I, I, it's not, it's not, I, I'm, I'm not one of those people. That say, Star Wars is never good. I'm not one of those guys. Not at all. Not at all. I'm disappointed in, in entries within this franchise, as I feel like a lot of people are, you know? And I'm highlighting, I'm, I'm simply pointing out things that I, that I find frustrating or that I dislike or that I, I, at the same time, pointing at things that I think are good or could have been done better. So, anyway. So I'll be just understand my perspective. And again, I'm not here to argue with anybody, of course, just have nice, natural conversations. Just want to get my, my POV, my point of view out there. Yeah, Empire. Empire is like my, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's in my top ten. I fucking love The Empire Strikes Back. I mean, I love the original trilogy. I can put those movies on. I want to do those for watch parties later this year if you guys. It's going to be so goddamn good. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the games are good because KK has less... So Lucasfilm does not have as much sway as now. As far as I know, they don't have as much sway over the games. And so they're able to have a little more freedom. Um, but I'd have to look into, like, specifically. But I, I just don't feel like they have as much restrictions as, the, like, the TV shows and the movies do and the cartoons do. But, you know. Oh, I got your mind. I'm getting hot. I'm getting you. This Acolyte review got me all hot and steamy. Oh, my God, Chad. What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? Give me a second here. <laughs> 